These diary entries that are supposed to be monthly have maintained their goal based on calendar divisions alone, and just barely at that. I severely need to get another one done in short order to buy myself some breathing room. And the thing is, I have plenty of things I want to talk about, I'm just not doing it. There's other stuff to be done right now, and I can see the video being better in the future when the topic has had more time to resolve itself during further play. But that right there is the very thing I want to talk about today. Hello, Kenku. My name is Joshua, and I am a procrastinator. I have always been a procrastinator. Whether it's based on instant gratification, delaying a project because I can't do it as well as I want to, or thinking that I need to do other things before the task at hand, I push things off. During school, I had deadlines. During my early career, things needed finished daily and weekly, and set days have certain tasks that have to happen, but now I'm pursuing a creative field as the person in charge and I can't quite seem to find where to buy deadlines. They didn't have them at the craft store. I tried the outdoor supply. Maybe they'll have them at the climbing gym. I should probably go to an amusement park. Plenty of lines to wait around in there. Outside of normal procrastination, I have found that an element of it deeply is seated in my inherent gaming style. If I don't think about what I'm doing, I run a very passive game. I set up all kinds of lore and adventure paths and chess pieces to be bumped into, but I don't force any of them to happen. I will let players walk right by something, even something that they want, if they don't interact with the right person or go to the right place. I am willing to wait for my players than to throw stuff out at them out of nowhere. More so than a passive stance, I find reasons not to force the narrative forward. That that really important plotline? Yeah, that'll hit harder if the party does X, Y, and Z. If I skip ahead to the dragon fight now, they won't get the pleasure of traversing half the continent to realize they went to the wrong volcano. Now, I have partially fixed the plot procrastination problem with my high-level one-shots. Skip straight to the dragon fight. You want an adventure in space? Here, have a ship that is basically a cannon, and I'll bring the cosmic horror. A series of games forcing me to just do the thing. While that's not really in a campaign format, at least it's practice getting to the point. Before I became a professional GM, the passive style felt more acceptable. Leave the open world up to the players, and if we spend an entire session in a bed and breakfast, so be it. Now, though, I find myself having to be careful I don't do that. If I respect my players, I should also respect their time and the online format that we're using. Communication is hard, and online communication is harder. People continue to set aside time for me, so I should make sure that they have immediate access to something of value. Now, if they choose to stay in the B&B &B during D&D, that's, that's fine, that's their choice. But there should at least be the option of the adventure right outside the door. Despite being cognizant of needing to have the active Game Master mode ready and prepared if the passive one isn't wanted, that only opens up half of my inherent style bias. What about the full-on plot procrastination? The finding reasons not to do the big thing right now. Just because I'm being active doesn't mean I'm not actively feeding the party iceberg lettuce as fast as they can eat. Where's the entree? The carbs, the calories, the umami and sauces. I have actually recently been gifted a wonderful holiday present a few months early. I have been gifted a deadline that has forced me to get to the entree. Most of my weekly campaigns are established on a basis of as long as everyone's having fun and life doesn't ambush us, we will continue to play. This is great. I get to know people, we have time to tell a long story, we aren't rushed, we have time for endless character moments. Let's take a milestone or two to go off and really get to know our inner selves. The plot can wait. Oh, oh look, look where we are. I recently had the pleasure of getting to start a new campaign with a group of mixed experience players. One of them played at one of my Gen Con games and wanted to see what a campaign with me would be like. 
they gathered together some people, some friends, some family, and reached out, uh, reached out to me for a game. The the players were mixed in experience of general RPG fifth edition experience with one of them having played in the high level one shot and one person being completely fresh to any aspect of role playing games. With this, we agreed to start with a small story to be completed in roughly a month. We did the month, and while there is desire to continue, a weekly game is a lot of time to commit, and at least one of the players will probably be dropping out after the second story arc, roughly another month long. For me, this is a marvelous gift. I had an initial deadline to craft something special for the group, and now I have a second deadline! More than just cutoffs, I have creative obstacles to create something I never would have before. When I start a campaign, I like to discuss with my players what they kind of want out of the game. It could be themes, genre, experiences, plot points. From there, I twist the ideas and try to get as many of them into the game as possible uh, while remaining a unique and interesting experience. Usually, though, I have months or even a year or more to hit these desires. If someone wants a dragon fight, I can delay until the characters are high enough level and then give them a dragon at what some would call an appropriate time. For this campaign, we would be starting at first level to allow the newer set of players time to learn the game. When it came to discussing the desires for the game, for the story, for the plot, a lot of things were listed. What got the loudest social response, though, was the inclusion of a vampire and the ability to investigate mysteries. So I knew that I maybe have a single month with this group, and if I only ever had that month, I wanted to give them something that they wanted and something that they would remember. So I had a group starting at first level, and the biggest plot points that they were excited about were a vampire and investigations. Now, some of you may be aware of the little campaign known as Curse of Strahd, which is an entire campaign following those two points. It spends the entire campaign, as long as you want to play it and more, delving into a rich story and preparing the PCs to fight a vampire that is still an incredibly difficult fight. My plot procrastinator brain screams that vampires are late game threats. I haven't run a vampire in my homebrew world yet because there is so much potential for the right party of the right level, a party who would have reason to care about the intrigue, the motifs of light and shadow, the depth of using such a complex monster as more than a single encounter challenge. There's so much there that I don't want to waste. So, I did it. Over the course of four sessions, I ran a vampire plot. I had no idea who the player characters really were when we started, and I'm still learning them. I had four first-level characters that would finish the arc hitting third level. I ran an extremely low-level vampire plot, and it ended up being the exact thing I needed to do. I have a rich, flavorful story that otherwise would have never existed, and it is all thanks to having a playgroup that isn't guaranteed for anything more than a month at a time right now, and even that is contingent on life's cooperation. Deadlines force me to finish things, yes. More importantly, though, is that deadlines force me to start things. The biggest hurdle of procrastination is the starting. The beginning, the doing something that by all rights makes sense to do at a later point in time. My very first GM diary that I sent 11 months ago was about taking time and appreciating what can only happen right now. It missed something though. That sending is tinted by appreciation and patience, but it is also tinted by passiveness. In an almost roundabout manner, This sending is about the same thing, but with more of an active push. You are coming up on your first birthday. You haven't mastered walking yet, but you're getting there. I've heard the phrase that the days are long, but the years are short. Now, it doesn't apply to me, but the same concept is here. 
you have so many firsts behind you and so many more yet to come. There are some things in life that can only happen now. Despite that, if you wait to appreciate them, they'll be gone. Where my first sending appreciated the moments that could only happen now, this one is a push to take advantage of those that can only start now. Life does not have hard deadlines. It is more than happy to let time continue to pass by before you realize you never did the things you intended to. Yes, there are things that can only be now. But there are things that can only be started now as well. This is my sending, Kenku. There are a thousand reasons not to do what you want in life. I hope you find the one reason to get started.